Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today stars in the new feature film, Abigail, available to watch on digital platforms now, including Apple TV, Google Play, YouTube, and Vudu. Please welcome Ava Cantrell. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so happy to talk about the movie with you. Ava, it's a pleasure to have you on. I know I've known you for a few years. I remember yeah. right when you had this role with like Young Sheldon and these other guest spots, you actually support a few m movies that I was involved in. You would just show up and everyone's like, who is this, this girl? She's incredible. Now you're starring in feature films and it's so great to see you on this journey. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's been really amazing. And getting to lead a movie was an honor and it was really exciting as an actor and it was a challenge and you don't always get opportunities like that. So it was really wonderful. Thank you for inviting me to the premiere. Yeah, we got to see it at a music hall in Beverly Hills where a lot of epic premieres have happened. So we get to celebrate Ava the other night. The thing I specifically liked about it was the style too, because the film takes place in the mid 1970s and it actually felt like you were back in that time. You know, it had the feel of a 70s movie. That's awesome. Yeah, it really was so well costumed and the environments all looked like so 70s and, and the, the music and everything. I think it all really fit. There's this scene in a grocery store and every piece of it is so 70s immaculately put together. It, it, I absolutely love that scene as far as style choices. The scene with uh, Lucas and his mother and then uh, the police officer comes in. That was one I didn't get to do and I was just like, man, I would have loved to see that whole setup. But that was like my one day off, so. <laughs> right, right. We filmed in Central California. Something that was really different though is the weather. So like we were supposed to be taking place in... 70s Alabama in the summer. It was Northern California in the spring. So our night shoots were very cold. I think it came together really cool. The almond orchards is like where we filmed a lot of the scenes. And I think it was a really fun place to shoot. I really love the chemistry between Abigail and Lucas. Uh, you. you two worked very well together. So it's like basically, you know, Abigail comes in, her and her mom move to this town. Lucas is the neighbor. And a, a big theme about this is bullying. And you meet Lucas. He's a little standoffish. And he's kind of testing you, but it turns out he's the one who's getting bullied. And you're there for each other, but you really stand up for him. And I feel like you two are helping each other out. And I just really like the relationship you two shared in the movie. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, Tren was a really great scene partner. And I think that we just kind of bounced off each other really well. There's just like a really cool dynamic between the two characters. Because, you know, Lucas is struggling and Abigail doesn't feel like she's struggling. She feels like she has it all figured out and, and is trying to kind of corrupt Lucas and and sees some vulnerabilities and and tries to show him that like hey this is the way I solve my problems I can help you too let's do this together and form an alliance and and they do yeah I thought that was really fun to explore how do you feel about the bullying message in this film I think it's really complex because I experienced bullying as a kid and and that's something that Lucas's character people can probably relate to so I liked that the movie touched on it. I think that it's a big problem. And like you said, it, it now is a, even more serious because it's harder to avoid. I think that that's like a good cause to talk about and a good thing to pay attention to. The problem with that in the movie though is don't solve your problems the way Abigail and Lucas do. <laughs> it's not the answer. <laughs> I do like that Abigail tries to help him. It's just kind of really interesting because she really just does corrupt him. And I think that it's a really good approach to like a horror film to me like a thriller it, it, it's kind of gone girl-esque to me because it's like normal people don't solve their problems this way <laughs> the bullies in the film that scene in like the courtyard of the school was a really fun scene to film abby's just trying to show him that like you don't have to feel powerless and i think that that's very exciting to lucas after he feels that way not just from his bullies but for Lucas, it's hard too because it's at home. Yes. It's kind of in that way, like you were saying, he doesn't get a break. His mom's his bully too. And I'm a bully in a way in the movie, unfortunately. <laughs> to her mom. She's so mean to her poor mom. I did feel for her mom. I mean, certain people in the movie had it coming. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. But then. Oh, um, for yeah. sure. Right? <laughs> Without spoilers, like, yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could feel it in the audience. I mean, everyone was rooting for you and Lucas, especially in those early scenes when I was a little kid in the 90s and even in the and into the 2000s. I mean, some of the language that was used in that film, those kinds of slurs, if you weren't as good in sports or someone older and intimidating wanted to say something to you, I'd been a target of that just because I wasn't picked for a team or something. So people would come at you and say slurs 
similar yeah. to that. I like how the film For acknowledged sure. that. I met all the actors afterwards, like your coasters. They were the nicest people, but they were so <laughs> believable in their characters. They were. Mini tread. Yeah. And other, yeah. <laughs> I know, so malicious on screen. The writing as well, kind of authentic to the bullying and also the 70s. So there's plenty of people that, you know, have watched the movie or will watch the movie that were alive in the 70s. So it wasn't that long ago, but I feel like it's really relatable to teens. They don't feel like, oh, this is a really cool aesthetic. And also like, it's super watchable period wise. Like I love a good period piece. Yeah, I think that that was a, a good aspect of it. Even the wardrobe too. That's where my brain is going is we were all wearing authentic 70s clothes, which was kind of fun. There was a period I like had Jim Morrison hair when I was a teenager and wore like bell bottoms and everything. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. Whenever I get to dress up for a movie, I, mean, I love it. I mean, yeah. I also go 80s to 80s parties as well. What I do like about movies that take place in these eras because of social media and technology, you know, people rely on cell phones. I'm just saying, cause that's how it is nowadays. So when you go to a yeah. simple time like the 1970s, and what I mean how about how it was shot like a 70s film as an audience member, what I liked about the film was it didn't have a lot of special effects. It didn't rely on gore or like all these quick yeah. things. It felt like a period piece. And with that, so much of the horror is what you don't know or what you find out later on. It's a mystery. You think one thing, it's another. And yeah. it was just really, yes, the way it was shot cinematically. Thank you. I That was so cool to hear. And also, yeah, I think that that is such a great aspect of horror is you just don't know what's coming. And, and Abigail, it really does like snowball having these reveals or these plot twists. I love movies that have those. So I thought it was really cool that Abigail does kind of leave audiences guessing a little bit. And it was so funny as like, as an actor who's filming it, who knows the whole script back and forth and kind of has some backstory to the character and, and knows the whole ending. It's so different and it's not, I'll never get to experience the movie in the way that the audience does. And so it's cool to hear. Yeah, well, I really enjoyed this movie. What's next for you career-wise? Where do you see yourself going? Being able to lead a movie could definitely just be a, a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, I certainly like appreciated it in that way, but I'd love to do more and I'd love to do it in different genres. I love horror. I love thrillers. I'd love to also do the challenging role in different genres. I do have like a like a zombie apocalypse movie that is in the works. And that's another fun genre. I love the apocalypse movies, kind of survivalist. That excites me. And you're so talented in everything you do. You've done comedy. You've done like family friendly content when you were younger. And now as you've transferred into like a young adult, you've, you've taken yeah. more complex roles. Abigail, it really showed your range as an actress. And you have like, you have this star look and you really draw people into your character. And, and you're very, relatable you know and I felt like everyone in that theater I mean you could just feel the energy they were cheering for you they were applauding you and the way that you handle yourself too I mean like the second you show up to the premiere you had photographers all over you people are running up to get your autograph you have that star quality about you and I just really can't wait to see what roles you take on and where your career goes from here I'm so flattered thank you that's really sweet and yeah Abigail is kind of weirdly like likable and relatable which is so funny because she's so horrible <laughs> But you just can't help, like I hear this from everybody who watched the movie, you can't help but to root for Lucas and for Abigail, especially for them together. And I think that like, there's so many movies that I love that the the morality is so gray. It's in just this such gray area, or it's really just, they're really bad people, but you just root for them anyway. You know what I mean? Like, especially some really popular horror movies and thrillers lately, I think have had roles in there that kind of have that same effect. And I've always been a fan of that. So I wanted to, I, I hoped that that's how the audience felt about Abigail and Lucas. The big thing in 70s movies was like, that was kind of the birth where you had like John Carpenter, you had Halloween, uh, the Scream Queens, like Jamie Lee Curtis came out of that era, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, and a big thing with the like movies that came out in the 70s was a lot of them were anti-heroes, whether it was like Travis Bickle, you know, De Niro and ah. Taxi Driver. And even a Tarantino had mentioned something like this where, you know, and he's a big, obviously, you know, a lot of those movies in like the late 60s, early 70s, th those inspired him. And the storyline could be someone who, you know, you can't win. Like you could survive Vietnam, come back and then get, and then die in a liquor store that's getting held up. Or it was like you, but then by the time the eighties came around and still there's a lot of great movies I love, but I think as time went on, everything had to be more likable. But cause that's the thing is, is even you look at certain characters in the set that came out in seventies movies that 
you know, okay, maybe they're not likable or they're a bad person, but for some reason, whether it's Clockwork Orange, for some reason, you're still kind of intrigued being character. And I'm not saying, but like with Abigail, like she has a dark side to her. And even, yeah. you know, at first glance at the poster, you're kind of like, where's this going? What's happening? But the second you arrive with your mom, you get out, you meet Lucas, you confront some bullies. You're like, you're engaged in your story and you're rooting for, Ab that's the thing. We, everyone keeps saying that we are rooting for Abigail and Lucas. You know, there's people who are nice to them. I've, and, and again, like I felt like whatever, yeah. not giving anything away, there was something more complex uh, to Abigail. When her and Lucas are getting bullied or getting terrorized, you're like, yeah, stand up to these people, go after them. I'm not condoning violence, but you're like, yeah. It's I mean, yeah, for sure. That's like a big aspect too, is that like, just because maybe Abigail and Lucas aren't maybe making decisions, like, like I wouldn't want to be friends with Abigail in real life, but like, when you were watching them on screen and they're also getting bullied or Lucas is also getting terrorized by like his, his bullies and his mom, you still feel for them because it's like, well, they're still going through that. I want to root for them. I don't want them to have to deal with that. And you want them to fight back. And, and I think that that kind of anti-hero thing is, it's like a trend that goes in and out. Like you said, like the seventies, it was popular. Then the eighties, it was all like superheroes. And like you said that in Tarantino, I was mentioning you know, in the seventies, by the time the eighties rolled around, you could have a character that was edgy, but then it'd be like 70% of the movie. Then the last 20 or 30 minutes of the movie, they're apologizing for everything they did or, or compromised. Yeah. Abigail, like you, you really didn't play that. It was like, you're engaged. Unapologetic. And then they're yeah. it's apologetic, but even at the end, there is a reveal, no spoilers. And and it makes all the more sense to where you're like, okay, this is it. And, and you and the audience, I mean, as an audience member who is engaged and I mean, I didn't want to get up for it. I'm like, no, I'm not, I don't care that my soda is not refilled or no bathroom breaks. I'm like, I'm so sitting in here, I'm watching the movie. And then it was, it, I, I just couldn't keep my eyes off the screen. So Ava, I am just, again, so proud of you. So happy for your success. I can't wait to see where your career goes and what roles you take on next. Is there anything else that you would like to share with your fans? I would just really appreciate it if they watched Abigail. That, I mean, that would make me so happy. And I'm really proud of it. Thank you for all of the very nice things you said about it. I love to hear it. It makes me so happy. So thank you. <laughs> hey, Ava, you deserve it. You're intelligent. You're so talented. Everyone give it up for Ava Contrell. You need to go and watch her movie Abigail now on all digital platforms, including Vudu, YouTube, Google Play, and Apple TV. Ava, I can't wait to catch up again and, and uh, promote your next uh, masterpiece that you do. And uh, whenever you want to just stop by, chat, let us know what's going on. You have an open invite. And I wish you all the best on this already successful journey of yours. Thank you. I love your show. So thank you for having me on. Hey, you're welcome anytime. I'm a fan. <laughs>